Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just finished watching Disney's Jungle Cruise, which is a 2021 live action film that is uh, technically original. Uh, it's not an adaptation of some animation from 50 plus years ago. It is technically original, uh, but it is based on a, uh, a real life attraction at Disneyland. I've never been to Disneyland, but if I ever do, then I'll make sure to stop by this one. So, but that's honestly not a huge deal, nor is it important. Um, it, it might as well not even been attached, but okay. Probably just some extra marketing there for people who have enjoyed the ride, just to get them to watch the movie as well. So, Jungle Cruise is um, very, very derivative of Indiana Jones and Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. But if you can forgive that, it's a pretty good time. And I was able to forgive it because plenty of other movies have copied both those ones before. I liked Red Notice, I liked uh, The Lost City, and both of those are very derivative of those as well. So I have, I have kind of seen this, this exact same formula for a movie a lot, but it's proven to be effective formula, especially when the sets are as good as they are here. Um, they probably are using real Disneyland props and stuff, so it's a lot more practical effects than I realized. Obviously there is some CGI villains and animals and stuff, but the actual locations and the sets themselves, all real. They're not in some fantastical world, they're, you know, actually in the jungle, or at least what is made to look like a real jungle, and it looks very good. So this film is about, um, a... I think she's a doctor, so, but I'm just going to call her Lily. So Emily Blunt plays Lily, and Lily is pretty much the gender-bent version of Indiana Jones, and she is looking for the Tears of the Moon artifact, um, and she needs a navigator to get through the jungle. Also, it should be mentioned that she, she can't swim, so that's a pretty bad thing when you're navigating the jungle and the rivers and all that. So... She's looking for the Tears of the Moon because, according to legend, and her father was also an archaeologist, again, more Indiana Jones parallels, um, according to legend, the Tears of the Moon are able to cure any and all ailments. Now, this movie's taking place in, like, 1910, so I don't know if cancer was, like, an established medical thing at the time, but basically, it's the cure to cancer. So, she's, uh... Just trying to look out for the greater good of humanity and to cure them of uh, any and all problems they have. And she's also trying to follow her father's footsteps and um, make him proud as a explorer. So she enlists the help of a, a humble skipper who is in need of desperate need of money, um, who is played by Dwayne Johnson, and he's got a lot of jokes up his sleeve. He is a con man as well. Um, so you can't really trust anything he says or does. And, uh, the two of them make a great team, honestly. And, uh, like, as far as a viewing experience goes, as an actual team, they're very poor in the movie, but that's why it's funny. And, uh, there's also, she's obviously not the only one looking for it. And yet another Indiana Jones parallel. Uh, we bring in the Nazis from World War One. Although this film doesn't want to use the N-word, Nazi. It refers to them as Germans, but I did confirm they are Nazis. They, so they never use Nazi or Hitler, but it is for that. So this movie was, I guess, being a little unnecessarily politically correct there, because you can't just erase, um, you can't erase history. That stuff happened, right? So I would have preferred if it just called them Nazis as opposed to Germans, because that made things unnecessarily... I had to second guess that for a second. Um, and yeah, we all know it's a real life thing that Hitler had a division. I mean, that's what Captain America, the first Avengers plot and premise is as well. Um, so even Marvel, which is owned by Disney now, is willing to, you know, address the fact that Hitler was very into history and artifacts. That is a fact of life. So I'm going to assume that's what's happening, even though the movie doesn't want to talk about that. Doesn't want to acknowledge the existence of Hitler, but I'm going to assume that's what's going on. So, I'm assuming Hitler's leader, one of his generals, is going after the Tears of the Moon uh, in search of fabled legendary powers. And yeah. So, the movie's overall awesome. Well, is it awesome? No, it's good. It's, the reason I said awesome is because it was better than I expected, but it still can't be praised too highly, and my score is somewhat harsh, just because I've seen so many movies exactly like this. Yes, it is technically a unique Disney project, but 
isn't because it, it's just Curse of the Black Pearl and it's mixed with Indiana Jones and that's what this movie is. The reason, so I don't want to spoil things too much but without spoiling it, the reason it's derivative of Curse of Black Pearl is because it literally has a cursed crew that needs to find an artifact to lift their curses so they're not immortal anymore. That is one for one copied from Black Pearl. And then Indiana Jones is super obvious. Emily Blunt's character is, is just the female version of uh, Indiana Jones. So, but yeah, overall the film is fun, energetic, engaging, very well acted. Everyone's really enthusiastic and happy to be there. Nobody's phoning it in. Um, yeah, the, the, the rapport I felt was really good. Like the uh, Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt are passing the chemistry test. Also, there was an opportunity for this brother character to be an annoying third wheel, but he's not. He's actually really effective and really works in this movie as well. They even throw in a very short but earned, um, you know, not even really a subplot. I'm going to call it a subplot, but it's more like just like a throwaway line about, you know, him dealing with homophobia. So the reason that that brother character tags along for this ride, even though he's out of his element, is because he feels he owes something to Emily Blunt because um, she accepts him for who he is and isn't going to ostracize him because he's gay. So that was actually kind of, that was small and short, but well done. So overall, the film is very good. The sets are amazing. The visuals, other than the blatantly bad CGI, the actual jungle itself, the, the boat rides, it, it all looks like a real jungle and it does feel like I'm, I'm living in another world. Well, still the real world, but you know what I mean. So yeah, overall did really like it and uh, felt that the trio really worked together. Uh, their banter and uh, chemistry was pretty high and working very well. For the negatives of the film, uh, we've already talked about its uh, derivative and copycatting Indiana Jones and Black Pearl, so that's going to matter. Uh, the love... God, why do movies have to do this, man? The, the, the forced love thing between Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt it's terrible. It's how many hundreds of movies have I said that? It just continues to be terrible though. It's so rushed, so forced. Don't believe it. Just awful. Also, one thing character motivation wise, Dwayne Johnson, he was confusing because he's constantly looking out for her health, even though they honestly don't really like each other at that point. And he's a con man. He, he literally lies for a living. So why is he looking out for her health and safety and trying to get her to go back to port so much? It's like, dude, you're, you're only getting paid if you complete the mission. So why do you want her to go back to the port so badly? So I don't know. That was, that was kind of odd. I think it's because, again, I don't want to spoil it because that's a pretty big reveal when it happens. But um, I think the fact that there is this big reveal almost forces the writing to be plain unfair and continuity wise it doesn't make a ton of sense because they're trying to hide that fact so badly. They really don't want you to know the big secret. And then once you learn the big secret you start thinking about everything that's happened up to this point and you start to question it. But yeah, I'm going to give um, Jungle Cruise a 6 out of 10. I think it's one of the better live action Disney stuff but it's way too derivative and I've seen it a million times, a lot of the stuff in here already. Um, yeah, and also just the whole, the whole PG-13 CGI action stuff just doesn't work for me. I, I really don't like um, PG-13 action in general, unless it's like sci-fi, unless it's like Star Wars, then I like it. But when it's just this, when, when you're throwing around guns and bullets in World War I, but it's PG-13, it just gets kind of lame. So the action didn't do it for me at all. The CGI was bad. The villains were bad. Um, there's, there's just a lot of things not working the way they're supposed to. So 6 out of 10 for Jungle Cruise. Overall, still gets a thumbs up for me, though. I had a better time than I thought I would. And Dwayne Johnson really surprised me in this one in particular. Because Emily Blunt's amazing by default in everything she does, but Dwayne Johnson's pretty hit or miss for me, um, and this was a hit for him. This was one of his better movies, so I do recommend it still, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you.